What is up, Flav City family? It is Bobby and Art back at Aldi because Aldi Week continues. Seven days, three videos from Aldi covering A to Z. It's gonna be epic. Yesterday's video was the monster. I mean, monster haul of pretty much every single amazing thing here at Aldi. Today's video is very, very interesting. It's a food stamp challenge. Can you eat healthy on a food stamp budget? It turns out that the average person gets about $125 per month of food stamps. That breaks down to just $1.40 per meal. So we really have our work cut out ahead of us today. We're gonna go around, we're gonna pick out items we need to make three recipes at home later on. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The recipes are gonna be really tasty, but I also have to make sure they're budget friendly and nutrient dense. That's the most important thing. It's gonna be super tough. I'm gonna cross my fingers that we can do it. Art has the accounting background, so he's gonna keep me uh, loyal to this uh, challenge and we're gonna see if we can do it. Before we do that, take a second and click that red subscribe button, my friends, because every single week we have three videos on our channel and we would love for you to join the Play City community. Two videos are on the weekend, usually at the grocery store, telling you what to buy, telling you what to avoid, like that, and uh, why, right? Why should we buy them, why should we avoid them? And then during the week, we're doing a live stream, cooking a recipe from start to finish. So below this video is a little bell icon. Click that bell, enable all notifications because these live streams, you guys, are super fun and you do not want to miss them. Okay, I think the first recipe I want to make for breakfast will be a cheeseburger frittata. Super easy and great for a crowd, great for a big family because it's easy to make, super tasty and really cheap. Now, the question is, what beef do I use? Do I use the one that I always buy? The organic grass-fed ground beef, which by the way, Aldi has the best price ever, or do I do the more economical thing and trade down to the grain-fed beef and pay $3.69? It might come back to bite me in the rear, but I'm gonna buy the organic grass-fed beef because we've talked about it many times before. Grass-fed beef is not just better for the environment, for the farmer, it's better for you. Grass-fed beef has a higher nutritional profile compared to grain-fed beef. It has higher omega-3s, the good ones, lower omega-6s, the bad ones, and higher CLAs, conjugated linoic acids. Plus, if you think more about the environment, right, the planet, it's better for the environment because cows burp, cows fart a lot. A lot of uh, carbon dioxide, it gets set into the uh, atmosphere. When it's pasture raised, all the grass and the plants sequester that back into the earth because it's pasteurized on the grass. It's not in a feedlot surrounded by a bunch of other cattle pooping and peeing on each other and polluting nearby lakes and rivers. So I am not gonna sacrifice the uh, quality. I'm gonna go with the grass-fed beef. Let's go and see what I can do regarding the cheese for the frittata. Cheese, we kinda had the same conundrum we had a second ago with the beef, right? Do I go for the organic Simply Nature? That's a little more expensive or the conventional Happy Farms cheddar cheese. And once again, I don't wanna sacrifice because I know how important the organic dairy is. Conventional dairy is fed, grain fed, soy, corn that comes from Monsanto GMO seeds. I really don't want that because I don't want the GMO product in my body. And once again, the nutritional profile is better for organic. So even though on the surface, it looks like it's more expensive, if your body's actually deriving more nutrients, more vitamins from it, is it more expensive? something to think about, right? So I'm actually gonna go for the organic cheese here and something I don't wanna get is shredded, right? We talked about this in the Aldi video last week. Shredded cheese is coated in anti-caking agents such as cellulose or wood pulp or potato starch. That prevents the cheese from melting very well and I don't think the flavor is nearly as good as uh, singles or ideally if they had block cheese that was organic i would get that but they don't so i'm going to go for the next best thing which is the cheddar cheese in the organic form you guys might think i'm going to reach for the organic eggs to make my brekkie frittata here but i'm actually not they're 349 a dozen and the reason i'm not going to do it is because they're not pasture raised eggs we have a whole video about pasture raised eggs and why you want to buy them and to be honest i can spend about a buck fifty more at another grocery store and get pasture raised eggs. Uh, organic is nice, but that only means the organic feed is non GMO. They're still eating grain, which is not optimal, and they still might be in a hen house with 10, 20, 30,000 other chickens. If it's not pasture raised, I don't want to get it. So instead of spending $349, check this out. I'm going to save a lot of money. I'm going to get the conventional eggs for, look at this. 77 cents a dozen. Are they fed GMO corn and soy? Yes. 
but the fact that I already have really good quality beef and really good quality dairy is okay with me and it ain't worth spending the extra money just on organic, only pasture raised. Okay, let's talk about our next meal, lunch. I'm thinking about a really good taco salad with seasoned tortilla chips. What kind of greens should we use? Normally, I would buy something like this, the organic spring mix. It's actually an amazing deal uh, here at Aldi. 419 for 16 ounces, that is fantastic. That being said, it's still too pricey for our food stamp challenge here. So we look at cheaper greens. Then I went to the romaine lettuce, three hearts for 219. Not a bad deal, but romaine is not the most nutritious green. I wanna get the most nu nutrient dense food to really get the most bang for my buck. So I'm gonna go over here to the spinach. This is a eight ounce bag of flat leaf spinach for $1.39. I think this is probably our best deal of all the greens here. You kind of want to stay away from these bag mixes here because they're typically more expensive. Um, spinach, it says right here, high in A, C, folate, uh, magnesium, and iron, which is really good for uh, women who are postpartum. So I'm gonna get a bag of this, and I think that's the best we can do for the money. I'm thinking for the salad, around the edge of the bowl, we'll put some hot seasoned tortilla chips. We need some crunch in there, and I'm not gonna use like a tortilla bowl. This is fantastic. We talked about this last week as a very good healthy snack. Organic, non-GMO tortilla chips. They also make them in blue corn here, which is cool too. Um, these are gonna be great. At a buck 89, that's a great deal. I've seen organic tortilla chips for over $3 at other grocery stores. So I'm gonna scoop a bag of the white corn chips. These are gonna be really tasty. All right, we need some spices to make our taco seasoning for our ground beef. Normally, I have a recipe for my own homemade taco seasoning mix that has about eight to 10 different spices. I can't afford to buy all those spices. And even though they're in my pantry at home, they might not be in your pantry at home. So we got to cut corners here. And I spy some chili seasoning packet here. And I've seen some really bad ones in the past, but this one is actually decent because the ingredients start off with chili pepper and other spices, including cumin. That's good because normally I've seen a bunch of other fillers and MSG and other uh, taco seasoning or chili seasoning mixes. So is this ideal? No, but at 50 cents for a packet, I'm not only gonna use it for the ground beef, I'm gonna dust it over the tortilla chips. After they come out of the oven, it's gonna stick to the seasoning a little bit on the top of the tortilla and add extra flavor without adding any extra cost. Okay, fat. What fat or what oil are we gonna cook all these recipes in today? If I had my choice, I'd use different ones because different recipes, I want different flavors. Ideally, I'd like to cook it in avocado oil. They have a great deal here at uh, Aldi for cold pressed or unrefined avocado oil, high heat oil, neutral flavored, uh, good with omega-3s, lower omega-6s, heart healthy, but it's kind of pricey, $7 for 17 ounces. Grapeseed oil is another good option, but if, unless it says expeller pressed grapeseed oil, that means it's highly processed with high amounts of heat. I don't see expeller pressed on here, so I can't do this one. But the Carlini Aldi brand has a fantastic deal on extra virgin olive oil for $3.89, one of the best deals I've ever seen. So for this price and 23 cents per fluid ounce, I'm gonna scoop this all day long. Let's talk dinner, my friends. I'm thinking of doing my uh, fried rice with soft scrambled eggs and crusty chicken thighs. The question is, what kind of rice should I use? If you wanna make it super healthy, you would use wild rice, maybe brown rice, but I wanna kind of cut corners here because uh, we're gonna use chicken thighs, which are a good source of protein, and I have to save some money here with dinner. I think my only option here is white rice. I get a buck 99 for three pounds right here. Hey, ideal world, I would do like I would use quinoa fried rice. I have that recipe in my blog, but too pricey, man. $4 per pound, whereas I'm getting $2 for three pounds of white rice. This will work. Now let's go look at the chicken we have for uh, options. Chicken breast, I'm gonna say are out. They're just too expensive. Plus, guys, chicken thighs are where it's at. More fat, more flavor, and cheaper. Um, plus, they don't have any uh, organic or never any chicken thighs, only the breast. That being said, it might be too pricey anyway. I might have to downgrade here and just get the regular boneless chicken thighs for $2.49 a pound. That way I can really stretch my dollar because these are corn fed, these are grain fed with GMO, but sometimes I got to sacrifice, right? I already splurged and got the organic uh, grass fed beef. I got the organic cheese. I think it's okay if we get the chicken thighs that are the conventional for this one, but we do need uh, a couple sauces to make the fried rice. So let's check out our options. 
We're kind of limited, you guys, for the Asian sauces here. We really only have soy sauce or teriyaki and sweet and sour. The problem is, if I were to buy the sweet and sour or the teriyaki, there's a bunch of added stuff in here that I don't really want, like caramel coloring, cornstarch, uh, cane sugar. So I'm gonna opt for OG. Really, really simple. We're gonna go with soy sauce. I always like to get the reduced sodium one because you don't need all the salt in here. Now that brings us to an interesting point, and I'm gonna refer to Art for this. Just because this cost a buck fifty-nine, if I'm gonna use a tablespoon of this, I wanna amortize that tablespoon to the per serving, per meal cost we're doing. So I'm gonna ask Art, Art, are you okay with that? Totally fine with that. That thing has a huge shelf life and you're gonna get your full money's Thank worth. Thank you. And Don't Art you? is a former accountant, so if Art says it's good, then it is good. I do want to add some veggies to the fried rice, and I think one of the most nutrient-dense veggies we can do is broccoli. So this is $1.39 for a bunch. There's no weight on here, but I'll weigh it later on. And then I do think we also need some onion. So Art, let me come over by you. All right, of course, I just can't buy one onion, right? They're gonna make it hard for me. The cheapest option would be the white onions, but I don't really like that flavor. So I'm gonna spend $2.29 for a bag of yellow onions but art said we're going to use his amortization schedule he's the official accountant so there's roughly eight of these in here 30 cents an onion not too bad so i think we have everything to make all three meals let's go home cook them up art's going to crunch the numbers and we're going to see what the final budget per meal is all right back in the kitchen six hours you guys art and i were just in aldi for six hours filming the three videos for this Aldi challenge week, but it was worth it. And now we're gonna cap it off with three budget-friendly meals that are phenomenal. First up, we gotta make the cheeseburger frittata. I have an eight-inch nonstick pan here. Slap it down, get it going over medium-high-ish heat. First, we're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to the pan. Let's add the beef to the pan here. And I want it kind of like in crumbles here. The rest of the beef we're saving for the taco salad. So get that in there. Let me wash my hands really quick. Proof that he does wash his hands. That's right, once again, the food police ain't gonna get me because Art is here. A good pinch of salt. And a few cracks of black pepper. Art, the accountant, is it okay if I'm not including the salt and pepper in my budget? I have no problem with that. Thank you. We'll do eight eggs in the bowl. And we'll use the rest of the eggs for the fried rice later on. A good three quarters of a teaspoon of salt goes in, a nice crack of pepper, and here's my egg tip for you guys. Whenever you're making a frittata or scrambled eggs, if you want soft scrambled eggs, beat it like there's no tomorrow. The more air you beat into these eggs, the lighter and the fluffier they're gonna be. Now add the eggs to the pan, and then here's what you need to do whether you're making scrambled eggs or a frittata. Mix, mix, mix. See how there's little curds forming in there? You wanna keep those curds as small as possible. Small curds equals silky eggs. All right, this is what I'm looking for, you guys. Kill the heat on the pan. I got the organic cheddar. Let's throw it on a couple pieces, and then we'll transfer to the oven for exactly eight minutes. All right, while that is rocking, let's start on the taco salad. Let's preheat our pan up here, EVOO to the pan. And then I cut up one onion, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna let that cook for eight minutes until it gets nice and caramelized. Then we'll add the beef, then we'll add the taco seasoning mix. Eight minutes on the dot. Oh, look at it. Look at this, you guys. That's what I'm talking about. Cheeseburger frittata. And this is the beauty of the nonstick pan. Look at this. Just slides right out. All right, I'm gonna move that aside for a second and grab our onions. We'll go in with our beef, along with a pinch of salt. I got the Meat Nader 5000 or whatever it's called. You guys told me about it. It makes breaking up the ground beef so much easier. Look at this. In the meantime, let's cut into this frittata because I'm really jonesing to see a cross section of that. Look at that. Nice meltage there. Get chunks of ground beef. Oh yeah, cheeseburger frittata, kids. Little Timmy is gonna go crazy on Monday morning for school when he puts this into his pie hall. Love it. High five. Boom. That's nice. <laughs> That's really nice. Perfect timing to add 
our taco seasoning mix. So I'm gonna add about half of it and then mix it around. Here's a big tip when it comes to spices. Always cook them in the fat, no matter what you're making. If you're making a soup, a stew, a chili, a curry, when you cook or toast the spices in the pan, you're blooming the essential oils and turning the flavor all the way up. Now, let's take some water. If I were not on a budget, I would use bone broth or beef stock here. Uh, let's cook this for a couple minutes until it gets nice and thick, and then we'll start working on the greens and the dressing. All right, I want to chop my spinach just to break it down a little bit, and I'm gonna make my famous uh, mayonnaise dressing that I always do on Instagram stories and people love it. It's three ingredients. It's literally mayonnaise, ACV, a shot of olive oil, salt, and pepper. It's the creamiest, most easy dressing ever. Um, we're gonna take into account the cost of basic mayonnaise and apple cider vinegar at Aldi. Two tablespoons of the mayonnaise, and a teaspoon and a half of apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon of extra virgin, a couple cracks of pepper, and a pinch of salt. And that's it, right? I'm telling you, once you taste this, it's better than any dressing you can buy at the store. It's not full of preservatives, tons of salt, carrageenan, natural flavors, all that stuff we talked about in our Aldi haul to look out for is not in there, right? And we pulled our chips a couple minutes ago. While they were still hot, we put on a pinch of that taco seasoning mix. Why? This is why. See, it sticks to it. All of a sudden, we just made taco tortilla chips that are completely homemade. That's gonna be our crunch in our salad. So let's put down half of the dressed spinach and then put some of the seasoned tortilla chips around the bowl, half of the taco beef mix, and then I'm gonna take half a slice of the cheese, cut it up into a chiffonade, and then put it on top of the salad. And there it is, you guys, the taco salad for lunch. I want the ultimate bite. Fantastic. Wow. I'm not surprised, it's delicious. Plenty of food here, two people. That's right, you guys, two servings right here. Art's gonna calculate the cost pretty soon and we'll give it to you at the end of the video. Ooh. All right, dinner time. Chicken fried rice. Very, very basic, but it's gonna have big flavors. Same pan I used for the taco meat over medium high heat. I'm gonna use four of my chicken thighs. Let's do salt and pepper on both sides. Shot of the oil to the pan here. Let's add the chicken to the pan. You gonna use your splatter guard this time? Yes. Yeah. So I will. A little more salt and a few cracks of pepper. And like Art recommended earlier, I'm gonna reach down here. Everyone needs to have one of these in their kitchen. It is a splatter guard. It will save you big time with the cleanup. I'll put the Amazon link down below. All right, let's flip the chicken. How's that look, Art? Looking nice. So that's what I'm talking about, you guys. When you get crust like that, that's another flavor layer there. Let them go another three to four minutes. All right, chicken is done. Both sides are cooked through. Both sides have awesome color. So let's evacuate the pan. I roughly chopped up less than half of the broccoli and I also chopped up the stalks. I always say never waste the stalks. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt now and some pepper and the chicken bits, all the yummions on the bottom are gonna release into the broccoli more free flavor. That's what I'm all about. Let's give this guy seven to eight minutes and then we'll add the rice. I cooked one and a half cups of rice and I did it a couple hours ago. Why? Fried rice works best with dry rice. Ideally the day before, make it, stash it in the fridge because it dries out. When you put it back in the pan, it rehydrates and soaks up all the yummies in the pan. Never use fresh rice. So I'm gonna add all this to the pan here and then we're gonna start with a tablespoon and a half of the low sodium soy sauce. All right. I wanna mix up the rice here and then come in here for a second. You can kind of see that some of the rice is getting crispy. I call this the paella effect. They call it socarat. And once again, I have minimal ingredients, you guys. So I'm trying to add flavor and texture wherever I can. Now we're gonna make a well and we're gonna add three eggs to the middle here and scramble them up, break the wall. Bring everyone in here. And now we're pretty much in the home stretch. I wanna cook it another couple minutes, develop more flavor, but now would be the time you check for seasoning. And the only seasoning we can really add at this point is the soy sauce. Could use a little more and then we're done. All right, let's plate this dish by scooping down some of the fried rice. 
And then let's cut into one of the crusty chicken thighs. Perfect. Look at that, you guys. And put that over the top of the rice. And there it is. Chicken fried rice, about as basic as you get. All right, let's go for the big bite. That chicken thigh, you guys, is banging with flavor. But that rice, it's fluffy, it's tender, perfectly seasoned with that soy sauce. And I love that soft scrambled egg. That's good. That's really good. Right? I'm so inspired now, I just want to crunch some numbers. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Art has crunched the numbers and I got them right here. And we're going to put them in a Google document down in the description box so you can see them too. And you can analyze them and I'm sure find some rounding errors or something down there too. Uh, we have good news. We have bad news. The good news is that the breakfast, the cheeseburger frittata came in under budget, my friends. That came in at $1.08 per serving, which is great because we have a buck forty per serving budget to work with. Awesome. The uh, chicken stir fry, this was fantastic. This was a bare bones cost per serving of 88 cents. Things are trending up. Things are looking good until we get to lunch. That taco salad was a little too pricey, y'all. Uh, that came in at $3.15 per serving. Ouch. So all in all for the day, we spent $5.11. We had $4.20 to spend, so we went 91 cents over budget. That being said, like I said earlier, if you use conventional beef and conventional cheese, we're gonna calculate the cost too. And if you do that, you're only one cent over budget, so you nail that on the head. Is that ideal? Well, no, because I wanted to challenge myself with that premium product. Is it still a healthy recipe that's very nutritionally dense? Yes. Um, also, Art and I wanted to stress the fact that um, you have to use the products you buy. It's an investment, right? If you buy the apple cider vinegar and the mayo and the soy sauce, it will last you a long time. But if you don't use it, it's a sunk cost that's really, really going to hurt. All right, my friends, the video is done. And I want to thank you guys because you are the inspiration for this video. I got a number of messages saying, please do budget-friendly meals. And I thought to myself, well, why not we take it one step above and do like a food stamp kind of challenge video? Yeah, and the thing I want to point out is this was a mathematical exercise for us here given that challenge that yes. people asked us to do. Reality, if you're using food stamps, it's much more serious than yes. this. So it's not trying to make light of anything. Nope. It's just trying to see, hey, can you really eat healthy on a, on a low budget? Right. I'm just trying to help you out. We're not trying to do a challenge and yeah. like make fun of it. It's really to help you out and help show that you can do it on a limited budget. That being said, the recipes are down below, including macros and nutritional information. Share this video, you guys. A ton of work went into this video. Sharing is caring. Subscribe to the channel. Art and I have two more videos going below us right now, but we will see you very soon. And we say unto you like we always do, hashtag keep on cooking, mad love and peace.